was in here. Oh, you want to know what I did at the shop today? Since we have one minute left. Yeah, sure. Um, I decided. Long story short, I was I was melting a piece of nylon, uh, for a for a a, a pull string for a machine. Anyway, nylon coated string. Anyway. And it caught on fire when I was melting it. And so I was like, oh, let me grab this rag that's wet and I'll just wipe it off real quick. Oh, right. Gosh. What do you think it was wet with? Gasoline. Yeah, that was fun. It was gasoline or acetone. Those were my two choices. <laughs> that was fun. And that went up quick. Oh, I'm sure. That, that'll, get, that, that'll get the adrenaline going pretty quick. That was hot. Like the prodigal sons podcast. Oh, Randy, knows. thank you for the kind words. Good thing. Yeah. I mean, Sean seems like he's ready to go. Sean, yeah, Sean. Yeah. I've never done the intro. I know that's why I do it. I got the Sean, intro. The I'm intro. already ready. Someone did the intro. Go. Dave's so nice. Go, go, Hello, go. and welcome <laughs> to another episode of Prodigal Sons, <laughs> where, where we have here. real men. Real faith. Real talk. We're here for another riveting episode done expertly by this gentleman sitting to my side, Tom Rivera. Hi. <laughs> this exquisite gentleman, Dave Duncan. Hello. <laughs> I don't know if I could finish. <laughs> and to the lady full of class who keeps us under control, Sarah Hello. Beecher. Thank you. That makes me happy. Uh, are we missing something? Something feels different. So yeah, listen, the squares are kind of messed up today. Uh, listen, we have to talk because y- y'all had to come in and talk about your freaking contract the negotiation. Yeah, we were very now, happy. Now Elijah has decided. Oh no! Really? Of course. Of course. Uh, he has. That guy decided- gets paid more than all of us. He's complaining already. Um. Hey, Sean, put your yeah. mic closer to your face. Is that better? Yes. Get it up in your beard. Get just like right in the nostril or something. Yeah. Get it up in the uh, beard. So, yeah. So, I have to go back to the table with Elijah. I'm That's a difference over. in your voice. Yeah. <laughs> so, now we're going to start all over again. So, this week he is, uh, you know, he's he's taking, you know, interviews with other podcasts. This, um. You know, I heard there's another church basement that has a podcast that he might be interested in. I don't no, know. he's not leaving us for them. Yeah. They're such hacks. Yeah, I know. I can't believe that. Oh, you so know what? Let him let him jump ship. Let him go over there. Let's see how that works out. Yeah. You know, I'm going to try and keep getting him to the table, see if we can talk and uh, see if like, like Congress, we could take vacation time and not get anything solved. But we'll see what happens. Tell him that I'm willing to give half of what I make to him. To have him come back with us after all the crap i had to deal with to get you back on here to get you that you're willing to give up half to get him back that is amazing sir thank you very thank much for that thank I you know. but then he'll go on strike again the week after that's all he is yeah. he's just, yeah, i'll get I mean, the money just, back i'm not worried about it <laughs> <laughs> i mean whatever it is we get paid <laughs> vicious, but, vicious. Uh, so uh real quick i wanted to ask you uh did, did you guys listen to the sermon on sunday from uh pastor peter clark he did the sermon on sunday yeah, it will believe it or not. Yeah, he actually did a sermon. It was uh listen, I gotta be honest, I didn't hear everything he said. Um, I was trying my best to tune him out, and uh it, it is hard sometimes. He's a he's a pretty good pretty good preacher, but I was trying to tune him out, but um he said something that just just rocked me to my soul. And uh I mean I've been thinking about it all week, and by all week I mean today, because it was yesterday or uh or, or Sunday, but it, 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 two days ago. Not even. Anyway. Anyway, what he said shook me to my core when he talked about the farting pastor. I just I've never been so spiritually touched in my life (laughs) as when he brought to my attention something that I never heard of or saw before. And that was the farting pastor. Apparently, there's a pastor. I, apparently there's there's a pastor who heals people by farting on them and sean i i gotta say man yeah he's cutting into my business cutting into my business here this is uh i, I have to cutting move to into, so i have to move to africa obviously because the the tribe that i need to join is in africa 
farting on people's heads to heal them is a thing. I am in the wrong country. I have to move. That's just uh, uh, how it is. You got to move to Africa, paint yourself blue, and start farting on people, man. I mean, it seems to me like that is just your spiritual calling. That is. That seems to be where I'm headed. Uh, and I, I feel I- like then we'd have a multinational uh, podcast, which is only going to look better on the business card. Yeah, I mean, I could still zoom in. Um, yeah. I mean, you'd be blue. There might, might be a little more background noise. Yeah. A lot more but... background noise. Um, a whole lot more beans in my in my diet. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just I, I feel like I, I feel like you're fighting your natural calling. I feel like 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 there might be some inspiration here for you. You know, maybe so. I'll start a small outreach version of that here. See how you it like. Works. Yeah. 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 Why don't you start a small group in somebody's house? Are you volunteering? No, no. Okay, I'm just... I, I was thinking more like Tom's house. Okay. <laughs> or Pastor's house. It was his idea. Oh, yeah. Pastor's, Pastor's Pete's idea. house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, sure his, yeah, he, yeah. You could actually do it on the front lawn, and I don't, I can't see why the neighbors would mind. Yeah, we'll get right on that. That's, uh, that's definitely a thing right there. So, um, Anyway, I had something I wanted to talk about. Did you guys have anything before? Was Tom that? talking about the basement? Well, I wanted to. Uh, yeah, go nuts. Give everybody an update on the uh, studio and what's going on in the basement. Um, Wait, we so have a studio. I would say that ninety-five percent. The carpet has all been taken out of the of the prodigal son's room, and ninety-five percent of the carpet has been taken out of the whole basement. Um. I spoke with the pastor today and he said it'll be about a month till someone gets in there and gets it done. Wow. Um, so we are we are we are looking at eight weeks, two months before getting back to uh, to the regular rotation. I personally think that's on the late end. Uh, but yeah, two months is a good guesstimate on on when we will be back in studio uh, with new flooring. And uh, yeah. And I'm excited for that. I can't wait because this this is tough. I, you know what's strange this go around is I think we've gotten really, really used to the Zoom. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back into the studio, man. I, how long has it been since we did a did a show in person? It's a doctor. It's, it's, it, I mean, it was right before the flood. Thanks. Yeah. That was helpful. A I month and a half, that. two months. Yeah, I mean, you just I nailed mean, it all the way back to Noah. All the way back to Noah, we stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he t- yeah. and they right, took we're, us we're, two by two out yeah. of the church, out of and the studio, right? Two, two months. Do you think uh, it's been two months since we did a show in person? Uh, well, I think it was see. July, dude. Been... No, it was. Um, when did I start my journey, Dave? When did we start journey class? I don't know. Uh, Before journey, anyway. Yeah, it was the first. It was supposed to be the first week we start. We did journey, and I had to push. It was July. It was the end of July, and we pushed journey back to the beginning of September. So so yeah. yeah, we're we're six months there. Wow, six months already. Yeah, so, no wonder. No, no wonder. wonder. It's just uh, that's a I long time. See, you okay. guys won't be able to just roll out of bed, put on a sweatshirt, come over to your computer. You're gonna have no, to actually start wearing get in pants. Your car. Yeah, well, I'll this. already I'll already be at the church, so I'll be cool. Well, you'll be at the church anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. The cool so, part. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to have to I am going to have to find out where my pants are. Yeah, me too. That's for sure. And my shoes and socks. What does outside look like anymore? Oh, I don't even cold. know. The wind Is it? It looks like cold. All right. Uh, I'm going to. I, I, I took it upon myself. I decided to start a new segment tonight, and it's going to be a weekly segment. And by it's going to be a weekly segment, uh, that means that it may very well never, ever happen again if these other people here sharing the screen don't like it. So I'm open to that. But the new segment is called, Does That Really Make Me a Bad Guy? Also, this segment in parentheses is known as, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. This is a weekly segment in which one of us We'll tell a story from the week that we did something and other people might not have loved the, what we did. And so this is the fleshing out of the where we tell a story and then we get feedback from each other telling us 
Is that a was that a bad guy move? Okay, okay, okay. I, I love it. You like it. I already you like, like it. this. I love it. I love it. You yes. Like this? Yes. Okay. I could, I could do this every week. I think Ailey. We, I, Ailey. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. Pick you guys every week. So so let me just tell you what I did. Okay. And I I have no doubt that you're going to say what I did was not a problem. But I'm just going to say it anyway, just to get the segment started, you know, just to give you an idea. So I might have accidentally told my wife what I'd be looking for in another wife if anything had happened to her. Does that make me a bad guy? <laughs> okay. Shut okay. I s- face. Okay. I, I said that for shock value because I wanted to see what your faces looked like. Oh, it Sean definitely is- shocked me. <laughs> That's for okay. sure. Okay. So let me set the scene. We have three cars that we use in our household, and two of them have automatic seats. Um, and if you've never met Lisa or I, Lisa's five foot two and I'm six foot tall. And so the third car, the car that doesn't have the automatic seats is my car that I drive every single day. And she uses it once in a while. And what happens is, you know, and I will say she tries to be nice. Like she puts the seat all the way back, but I don't sit in that car all the way back. And so like forever, I feel like I'm just burying myself here. So it sounds like you're already burying yourself. (laughs) So like. Two or three times a week when she uses my car, uh, the next day I spend like five minutes trying to adjust it. So I told her today very kindly at lunch. I said, hey, honey, if anything ever happened to you, which I don't want it to, I would never be able to replace you. I love you so much. You're the best person in the whole wide world. And, you know, you and I are a perfect team. Um, I said, but I, I said, since I could never replace you anyway. All I'm, my only standard for, for if anything ever happened to you is that the next person be six foot tall. And it's kind of weird because. <laughs> so you weren't lying. You actually did do it. So it wasn't for shock factor. Right, does does that make computer. me a bad person? You want right. to let's start with you. <laughs> what do you think? <sighs> well, I, I, a I bad mean, person might. I, I could honestly say there wasn't much reaction from her. So, I mean, she, in fact, she didn't say anything and I haven't seen her since, but um, I got one question. Might yeah. it have set? Do you think it sounded like. In a, in a different world, I would prefer someone taller. You, do you think it sounded anything like that? I don't think it sounded anything like that. I think it sounded exactly like that once it left my lips and I realized what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man. Oh. Dave, I, I love you, brother, but um, <sighs> e- even I wouldn't have went there. And there's not <laughs> anything that I wouldn't do. I, I would definitely not have done that. But well, you, you know, know, you're on the prayer list now, so we'll be praying yeah. for you. Um, so if you guys, I mean, you guys have all been to my house. You know that uh, right now uh, I'm doing the Zoom uh, broadcasting from my sunroom. Uh-huh. What you what you can't see. The is sleeping bag next to him. There's, <laughs> there's a sleeping the bag next to me. The heat is shut off in this room, and I'm not allowed in there. <laughs> somehow, so, somehow there's a wall there now. It's just a wall. Just it's appeared weird. Uh, I told her that I would prefer if she was taller, and she hired a contractor to build a wall to keep me here. So, uh, so, so, what do you guys think of this new segment? Does that I like I like, like it. it. Oh. I like it because it's real. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, um, it, it doesn't. I, so so I'll go first. Um, it it oh, does are we not all doing it this week. No, no. We're going to tell oh. him the answer to his question. Oh, OK. I thought you were. Um, oh, OK. Yeah. So, so so I personally doesn't I don't think it makes you a bad guy. Uh, I, I do think, however, that you have a sick, demented sense of humor when it comes to talking about that. <laughs> that's like yeah. crossing like that's really close. No, to that. See, I mean, the other background is that Lisa and I talk about that all the time, about the fact that we wouldn't be able to replace the other person if something happened. So it wasn't like it's the first time I ever brought that up. I was just saying, since I can't <laughs> replace you, the only thing I'm looking for is somebody who's six feet tall. That's so the that first time I've dro- told her. <laughs> and, and, and it what was weird was she was like, 
she was like, well, why don't we just get a car that has automatic seats? And I was like, well, that's way too uncomplicated without me getting hurt. <laughs> get, get was, that's a yeah. lot less awkward uh, than just buy another car. Yeah. yeah. I, I, love, I, uh, I, I, I feel like if I had it to do over again, I would probably wouldn't. Have, I probably wouldn't have done it. You I'm wouldn't sure. change a thing. Stop it. You would do the same way over and over again. I enjoy pain. As oh. Ralph Ritter says, Ralph Ritter just wrote, I mean, do you enjoy pain, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's, I guess I got to chime in on this a little bit. <laughs> Dave, um, I know you're, you're, you're a, a very smart businessman. You do well with that. Um, yep. But I, I would I, I would recommend that you go out and buy an internal filter. That's all I would ask. I would say would suggest that you might get an internal filter that stops some of that from. I have the same problem. Yeah, I was gonna I say when you're getting a, that, you pick one up for Sean. Um, <laughs> I haven't found one that works, but maybe you can find one that works for you. Um, uh, let me know yeah. if you do, because um, I do that all the time. It's it's called I, you know we get sometimes we get the foot and mouth disease, and it happens to me quite a bit as well. So. Um, yeah. I don't personally see anything wrong with it, but I, I could see where your wife might. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. So, so I will say she already named this, this mystery wife, Helga. Oh <laughs> and so all day, oh all I hear is goodness. what does Helga think about that? Oh, what does Helga Dave. think about that? Oh, yeah. I think oh. You're in house, but... Yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. Um, the good news is I have a guest room. The bad news is I don't think I'm allowed to use it. Parse the uh, the uh, church apartment is open. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, to know. so that's good always an know. option for you. And the studio has the carpet ripped out. Maybe I could sleep there. Yeah, there's tables yeah. in there. You can just lay on a table. No, yeah. they're they're covered with stuff. I had to put. I lay the under the table. table. I lay under the table. Yeah, but I had a I, I I didn't nobody came that day, Sarah. So then I had to move everything. So I had to take everything off the tables so I could move the tables by myself. Uh, Pastor Peach just chimed in and says, can't use the uh, church apartment. COVID, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's I think he's just afraid that I wonder I if you hear the story. I would not be able to be moved out. So anyway, that's all I got to, for today. That's your your church exciting. membership might get just like suspended for a little bit. I feel like everybody's going to side with Lisa over me. Yeah. I don't hundred percent. Yeah. Even your I'll friends. <laughs> I'm on her side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're pr- probably wise. It's safer, safer to side with her. I love the segment though. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I, I think it's a keeper. I'm glad this whole thing happened today so that I could invent a segment <laughs> called Does That Make Me a Bad Guy? Yeah. This might go viral. Are are we gonna do the game now? <laughs> Is yeah, let's go. Let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's roll right into it because it's all joking matters. All right. Why don't you set it up, Sarah? OK, so um, this is our very obvious transition um, into our topic. As you guys know, our topic is a topic I've forgotten about. Um, does the church see some sins as better than others? So we are going to pit these guys against each other to see how good they think they really are or how good they really are. So we're going to play a game of never have I ever. And I rely (laughs) on you guys to say more than yes or no. One must elaborate. Ooh, this could get it. Be careful, Dave. Okay. So never have I ever. Who picked these questions, by the way? Oh, I did. Okay. Oh wait, there's questions. Wait, what yes. am I not understanding? Oh, well, I did put so... them on. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Thank yeah. you. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I came up with these questions myself. They're completely. Okay. Right. Oh my. <clears throat> All right, here we go. One of these before. Never have I ever experienced the sin of pride. Well, I am proud to say that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I have I have definitely experienced the sin of pride today. Uh, not today. Yes, Maybe not you today. Did. I'm uh, no, not today. I am very guilty. I am very guilty 
love it. Uh, it tends to get the best of me in situations. That's what my stories on that segment will be about. That'll be great. Never have I ever exhibited the sin of greed or coveting something else. You have to say things, guys. No, I mm. honestly, with greed, I've never really wanted anything. I grew up poor and broke, so we never had anything. So I've never really wanted anything. And if somebody else had something, I I always thought good for them. I never ever wanted to like take something from someone else. So greed, I'm sure there is. I can't say a hundred percent never, but it's uh, it's just really not part of who I am. Um, so I've never really wanted, like, I'm sure at, at some point I was like, oh, that's a cool car. I'd really like to have that or something, but I would never would have taken it or anything. It was more like an envy thing than a greed thing. Yeah. yeah I, 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 go ahead, Tom. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Tom, did go. You just call me ahead. Tom. Yeah. He did. He go ahead, Tom. Because that's what you were going to say. But then didn't say anything. But didn't say anything. No, uh, I definitely, definitely, uh, have have done this. Um, I, uh, I for for twenty plus year, I, I chased the riches of the world and and I envied people. I was in uh, multi level marketing trying to trying to get rich, and I was like, oh, I want that. I wish I can get that house. And and I was definitely definitely very much into uh, into coveting uh, people's earthly possessions that that they had. Uh, so, yeah, I I'm also guilty of that one. I want to say when it comes to greed, you know, in my life, probably the most guilty I would be of that would be um, forgetting every once in a while. And it's only every once in a while, but still forgetting every once in a while that every single thing that I have and everything that I've been blessed with, including health and sight and smell and everything comes from God. And so like the greed that I would be guilty of would be saying like, um, well, I'm not going to go out of my way to do or to share or to, you know, and then you catch yourself and you go, well, it's not mine anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, it's not like I'm giving my money. It's I'm giving God's money. He just gave it to me to hang on to, you know? So for me, that's, that's how I would ex exhibit greed every once in a while. So, so, so on the other side of my life is something is exactly what they've said. I have realized that nothing around me belongs to me. Uh, me and Dave had this conversation at the ice cream shop about the chairs and, and me letting people sit down. I said, I, those, I don't have a say who sits there. I don't own them. God owns them. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm humbled enough <laughs> to know, to, 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 to be able to understand that now. And yeah. Next question. Okay. Never have I ever exhibited the sin of lust guilty 100 guilty. guilty um yeah it was many guilty. years many years guilty Gu guilty i mean yeah yeah um yeah that's a different episode um yeah never, it's gonna be a whole different episode. that's that's the episode where sarah takes a break <laughs> That's why I don't really want to say anything else because it'll Sarah, take over. Like, well, I heard that, that was, was the episode that Elijah was going to do solo, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Vote on it now. Sarah's yeah. like, I'm going to take the week off for that episode. And then a week after, after I have to edit that episode, I need the following week off. As yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> Never you know, I, I'm, I am it's, sensing it's, a theme here. An interesting episode that maybe we can do one day is it is interesting because it's thinking about this, this lusting, right, is is the difference between who you hang around with after a divorce, right, or after a, a situation in your life where you and your spouse are are kind of deciding to go separate ways. Right. With, with Elijah, he, he was able to 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 have us. Right. And I'm not going to get into this. It'll be the end of it. And for me, it was just a whole different story because. I didn't have that Christian friendship. So yep, it's that's anyway, just for later ideas. Go ahead, Sarah. Sorry. For future reference. Awesome. We'll, yeah. we'll write this down. Um, <laughs> never have I ever exhibited the sin of envy. Uh, hang on a second. Um, I'm a Jets fan. <laughs> that's all Dave knows. <laughs> I'm out. 
Yeah, no, like I said, I, I, I'm more, I, I would say I'm more guilty of envy than greed because growing up, not having anything, you always wanted, you wanted the house, you wanted the nice car, you wanted the nice sneakers, you wanted the nice jackets and stuff like that. And my parents did get stuff when they could, um, you know, like when starter jackets were cool, my mom made sure I got one that year. But um, yeah, I've always been like, oh, but as I've gotten older, I just figure, you know what, they work hard, that's their stuff. I'll have my own stuff someday. And now I'm in a position where I'm going to have what I wanted from way back. So, you know, but yeah, definitely, definitely growing up as a kid and, and through probably until my thir- mid thirties, definitely an envious person of other folks. Okay. Never have I ever experienced the sin of gluttony, which is also understood to include drunkenness. Uh, um, I've never <laughs> no, I mean, when I was when I was like 330 pounds, it wasn't because I was gluttonous. It was just because I really, <laughs> really enjoyed food and I enjoyed it very often and in large quantities. But I wouldn't say that was gluttonous. And as far as drunkenness, I don't even know what that means. Listen, <laughs> if you is consider- lying coming up next. <laughs> if you consider living in a car for six months drunk for six months straight gluttonous then i think you're wrong <laughs> if, if you consider downing several bags of m&ms within a spam of a couple days then then maybe I might those were trash that. bags full of m&ms tom <laughs> look like tony montana <laughs> and donations came into illumination and i just I'm like <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for all you've bestowed upon me. Yeah. Am I, am I getting you guys down? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do the two, the last two really quickly, and then we'll get into our topic, which is a juicy yep. topic. Never have I ever exhibited the sin of wrath or anger. How dare you? <laughs> Never. Not once in my lifetime. I'd like to go find that guy in the Penske truck. Oh, um. Gosh. I, I would say no, but there'd be several dozen sheets of drywall that would that would call me a liar. No, obviously the answer is yes, but it's interesting uh, because doing this game is 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 it's amazing how it just reveals how good God is as far as being able to take you out of a lot of that stuff uh, if you just you know have him in your life and 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 it's. Because that was my life. All this stuff that we're talking about, have I ever that that was it's yes to everything. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. That was that's really important. And I think it really lifts the mood. Yeah. And the final one is uh, never have I ever exhibited the sin of sloth or laziness. Sloth. <laughs> uh, I mean, how could how could you possibly lie about this after? divisional weekend nfl divisional weekend (laughs) where i literally spent all of monday feeling like a total turd for (laughs) having watched (laughs) as much tv as i did over the weekend uh i almost felt as bad as a bills fan (laughs) oh too soon dude too soon so so i want to just chime in real quick on this one because it's an interesting one for me the answer is yes but i'm not going to get into details but also i do want to say that that sitting at your house uh, watching football on a Saturday all day like Dave did uh, is not sloth. Uh, oh, you did it too, huh? Oh, well, not that I do it. Uh, sloth is, uh, is is when you're doing something else that's really keeping you away from doing the will of God, uh, taking a break is. and just sitting out and just taking a day off and, and saying, I'm going to watch football all day. I know I, I don't I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. Um, my conscience says otherwise, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, if okay. you're feeling convicted, that makes it sloth. If you're feeling yeah. convicted, then it makes it slothful. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. There's downer. there's the answer to it. Yes. That downer of a game. Oh my goodness. I did not No, you know, that. it was yeah, yeah. 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 Reflection yeah. time. <laughs> That's I what it felt bad. like. It felt like reflection time. That was actually a well, cool game. I, it's I'll be going for... in the prayer corner as soon as we're done. Yeah, it's time. It, for no, reflection but I... time. <laughs> I think that's I think I think it's important and we did it in a fun way, but I think it's important for people, especially Christians, uh, you know, uh, a.k.a. Pharisees sometimes um, uh, 
it, to, to look at their life and realize that they've been guilty of all the, of, of all the sins. Right. I mean, that, that we've, that we've been all, all been guilt, guilty that I don't want to get into the, the topic too soon. Tom wants to read a verse. I'm sure. Hey, Tom, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's read a verse and uh, dig into the topic. I'm actually going to, uh, to read it from, from, straight from the Bible. It's the NLT here. So I'm going to be reading Romans three verses nine through 12. Uh, well, then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we all have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good and not a single one. And there's a lot of there, there's a lot of meat in there. There's a lot of meat in there, but it's a powerful yeah. verse because it points out that we are all sinners. All of us have sinned. Uh, uh, and, 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 and in my humble opinion, even opinion, all of us will sin again, <laughs> um, which brings us to uh, possibly the last episode of this topic. Talking about sin, you know, when you compare sin, when you compare two different situations, right? It's not even call them two different types of sin, two different situations that's going on in, in someone's lives. Right. Uh, and then you look at it and, and it's one situation, a greater sin than the other situation. And, and that's kind of what we are going to uh, dig into today. So why does the church see some sins differently than others? Because and we do them more. Yeah. So 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 why? First of all, I, I know there's nothing new and it's just the human condition, but I feel like judgment is up about 300,000% in the last 10 years. Right. But um, maybe I'm just becoming more conscious of it, but, but it does seem like even in the church that we're always looking at sinners and we're putting them into classifications, right? As we talked about, uh, or I brought up the uh, last week, I think it was where, you know, the gluttonous, the person who's, who's overweight, right they get looked at differently than the person who's hooked on drugs or the alcoholic right or the uh person who is sleeping around but you know that their sin is sin that's what the bible says but why does the church see some sins better than others well i think something based on moral standards in society like we consider murder worse than stealing stuff like that. But I also think it depends on how you feel. You feel that you are ranked in the so Sunday social club. Um, listen, let's call it what it is. Unfortunately, a lot of folks show up on Sunday and think they're entitled because they've been coming. And I'm not putting anybody out. I'm not thinking of anyone in particular. It's just in general, sometimes, you know, we feel like, as Christians, we are, the longer we've been calling ourselves that, it just makes it more believable. And we keep showing up on Sunday, and that makes us better than other folks. So it's easier to put others down. Like, well, I go to church on Sunday. Yeah, but what did you do the other six days of the week? Um, so I think some of it, like I said, comes from, you know, society's moral standards. And some of it comes from a, self, uh, a sense of entitlement within the church that just tends to come with folks. Uh, who come and go. I think we need to remember that we all came to church. We all came to Christ for the same reason, because we are sinners. We all come to church because we're broken sinners and we're there to be healed and made one in him. And, and there's no one of us better than the other. How do I compare my sins to Dave's or Tom's or Sarah's or Elijah's or anybody else's? I can't because in God's eye, all sin is bad. Stealing's bad. Uh, you know, murder's bad. Lying's bad everything. God looks at it all the same. So any sin is bad in God's eyes. So I don't understand why we tend to look at it as, you know, any worse than somebody else. But again, we live in a society where there are rules 
based on what we feel is um, mo- deemed more offensive. And I, I think, think part that- of it, part of it also could be that um, we want to point the finger at somebody else. So nobody looks too closely at us. Oh yeah. You know, um, I think we, uh, we tend to point out sins that we couldn't be accused of, you know, things that don't make sense to us. If we have no problem with alcohol, we might point out the alcoholic or, you know, if we don't have any problem, if we've never been adulterous, we might point out that somebody, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, but I think that could be, that could be just trying because we're all sinners, right? Just like Tom said, we've sinned before and we're going to sin again. So, so I think that's what, um, we might just be trying to point out other people so that you don't look too closely at what's going on in my life. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is a great topic. Um, and, and the reason I say that it's not because of the topic in itself, but it's because it's anybody who knows me, uh, it's, it's almost my life mission to, uh, to, uh, figure out what, what the definition of, of sin is. Um, a lot of you, Sean, uh, my wife, I mean, a lot of people that, that are, that are close to me as far as, uh, bib, uh, religiously speaking, although I hate using that word, but, but theology or whatever, you know, that, that the sin thing is a big issue for me because I think as a society, and I think as a lot of people, we try to downsize or downplay sin, uh, to kind of make it okay. You know, um, and I got a real problem with that, right? Because first of all, we're not supposed to be judging anybody, right? Sean always, one of his favorites is love the person, hate the sin, right? Um, and there's a lot of judgment that comes with, with, you, uh, with you doing that. Um, on, on the other side, though, we got to live a righteous life, right? So we got we to gotta make sure that we really truly understand what it is that is sin, right? Sin is a separation from God, right? And, and if we're separating from God, if that's what sin is, is a separation from God, <laughs> that's scary to be separated from, from, from our creator, right? Um, so, so I think it's important for us, especially as we go through life, to make sure that we have a good understanding on the expectations of our God on us as far as sin and, and the type of life that we live. You know, one of my favorite verses now is uh, knowing to do right, and not doing it, the book of James. And, and, and it really, it really defines sin for me because it's like, all right, knowing to do right, but not doing it. That can mean anything. Yeah. That can mean anything, yeah. you know? And, 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 and for me, I'm like, all right, so, so if I really define sin as really strict, I'm sure God's not going to have a problem with that. Well, I, one of my favorite um, Bible passages is in the book of John when uh, Jesus, uh, I think it's coming. Um, it, the, the Pharisees were trying to test Jesus and they, I think it was chapter eight. Um, Pharisees are trying to test Jesus and they have a woman who is an adulteress and they're going to stone her. Um, and they said, we'll ask Jesus, we'll say the, the, the scripture says that we're allowed to stone this woman. What say you? And that's where, I mean, that was one of my favorite Bible passages because Jesus says to them, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. And then he, there was just this beautiful this beautiful time where Jesus, like they said, he was like, went to stoop down and he's like drawing in the dirt. Like he wasn't even looking at them while he was saying it. And it says one by one, the Pharisees left. They, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And then Jesus got up and he turns to the woman and he says, where did all your accusers go? And she said, they're not here. And he said, go and sin no more. And the more you look at Jesus, I mean, the the Old Testament, and I love the Old Testament, but the Old Testament is full of laws and full of regulations and full of scriptures that say, this is what you can do. You can't touch the the dead dead animal skin. You can't do this. You can't mix these two. You can't. It's And then Jesus came and showed you what's important. Just like what you just said about Sean, that love the sinner, 
Jesus showed you, and uh, and I have it written down here in Mark. Uh, um, the Pharisees were angry at Jesus for eating with with uh, sinners and tax collectors, and he said, "It's not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick." Jesus, more than anybody in this this big giant book that that we read, uh, Jesus showed us that it's it's a lifestyle, right? Of of loving people, not caring about who they were, loving the people. And that, and just that act of loving the people where they are gets them into this whole new lifestyle of not sinning. And not that they're never going to make a mistake, not that they're ever going to let their humanness take the best of them. But, but the fact that the, the fact that he's loving people where they are, no matter what they've done, and, and the, the Bible, which I didn't even realize until recently, when you read the gospel, Jesus so many times went up to people and forgave them their sin without the people asking. He was almost like he was just giving them a clean slate without them asking, you know, all the people who needed uh, physical transformation, where he just, he said, your sins are forgiven because he had the power to do it. And I also think he liked to upset the Pharisees because, you know, they were, they were holier than thou. So I think Jesus showed us in his life. Um, that the individual sins don't matter. What matters is the transformation of the heart to get away from the world and go towards a resurrected king. Yep. And that's a great point that you bring. I mean, as far as like, you know, when I said the whole my mission to define sin, you know, that comes from a place not of judgment, not of I want to figure out what sin is so I can tell you what you're doing wrong. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And no, it comes yep. from a place of let me worship my God better. Let me give him what he's asking for. Well, how can I please my God even more? And by maybe if I learn something new, I share it with my brothers and sisters. Yes, but yeah. it's not a it's not to a place of where course. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, that look at that guy look at that guy no no not at no, all no no and, and you're one of the i tell people a lot too that you're one of those uh you've showed me so much tom because you exhibit when i saw you at the ice cream shop like you just brought up i tell people about that all the time that i met this guy who, who ran a business in the downtown Pottstown where he was selling ice cream right and and to me as a business owner you know you see homeless people walk into your business and you're like oh man that's probably not good for business and tom's like i don't care man come on in i don't care i don't care if some person sees that and decides not to buy ice cream here i'm going to take care of this person that god just sent me man that is so powerful you're not don't think for a second that your focus on sin yeah. is is to condemn people. It is not, it is because I think you've been through so much and gone down the wrong path so many times that you want to show people, mm -hmm. Hey, I've been there. It doesn't satisfy. Come follow me, yeah. you know, come follow me as I follow Christ. You know, I, that's man. Anyway. So, you know, I'm doing the starting point class for the church on Thursday nights and, and week two, um, Andy, it's an Andy Stanley course. I love Andy Stanley. And the whole discussion on, on sin is that that's whole week too. And um, I, I think in this, the world that we live in, that's so self-centered now, and you just said it, Dave, you know, people are going to make mistakes. I think we've become so lax with the fact that we can say, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, it was a mistake. Oh, I didn't mean to do it. I made a mistake. You see politicians and sports figures and, mm. you know, and, uh, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know what I, you know, my wife and I have been married for 30 and I just, I made a mistake. You didn't make a mistake. If I'm driving to Dave's house, I'm supposed to make a right and I make a left. That's a mistake. If I step out on my significant other, that's that's a sin. You made that's so, that's a lifestyle. That's a choice. It's a, yeah, lifestyle. That's a lifestyle choice. It's a self-centered yeah. lifestyle choice. So I think we become too yep. comfortable and too complacent using the word mistake and right. stop preaching what sin is and, and telling people what sin is. And so one of the questions in the book is, how do you define sin? And for me... I've come up with, it's basically a five word definition for sin. Uh, and for that, it's deliberate disobedience to God's will. You deliberately wow. disobey what God expects from you. Let's be honest. That's what we do. When we sin, we make an absolute choice to do one thing over another. Most people have it in their head when they're going to do something like, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? I'm guilty. Do it all the time. I usually tend to side on the not do side and do it anyway. But we have a choice, and we deliberately choose to disobey what's in God's will. The Spirit will speak to you. If you know it's wrong, you question it. And if you question it, don't do what you're questioning. It's that simple. Um, 
But that's my, my definition for sin is a deliberate disobedience to God's will. But the thing for us as Christians is that we need to remember is, yes, we're going to sin. Unfortunately, it's, it's in our nature. It's human nature. Since the fall of man, it's in our nature. The thing with being Christian is, what do you do after you sin? How do you right that wrong to, to fix? How do you fix that problem? Do you, you can't just sin. Like, I can't just go up and punch Tom in the mouth and walk away. Well, you could. Not, I mean, you well, could I, mean I, I could. I could definitely could. That's the better no swing down. But if I sin against Tom, as a Christian, my job is to then go back and fix that go back and turn and go back and ask for forgiveness and fix the situation. You don't just leave it there. And that's again, where the deliberate disobedience comes in. We don't fix situation. We sin against somebody. And instead of making it right and putting ourselves back in righteous standing, we just leave it and forget it. And which is even worse because we just say to heck with that. So like I said, it's just, it's tough. We, we need to stop using the word mistake for one and just call it what it is. We're not mistakers. We're sinners. Uh, <laughs> listen, nobody's a career mistaker unless you're in politics. Um, <laughs> but we're not mistakers. We're sinners. And right your wrongs. Own up to what you did. Be accountable for what you did. And face the music for what you did. Seek forgiveness. Actively seek forgiveness. Um, that's so, how you uh, follow Christ. The one thing I, th I think it was Sarah who put it in the notes. I I'd like to bring it up is um, the uh, what do Americans think about Christians in general? Are we hypocritical, judgmental, hateful, snobbish? Um, and, and have we hurt people outside the church? Uh, and we, have we hurt people inside the church? I mean, I think generally um, as Christians as a whole, I think we need to do a better job um, not enforcing the law of the Old Testament, but we, I think we need to do a better job of following our namesake and being more like Christ. Um, and I'm not saying that, that that means that we let every, everything go because Christ didn't do that. But I'm saying that we'd be accepting to people, even if we don't understand, you know, their lifestyle choices even if we don't understand the addiction that they're going through, even if we don't understand, you know, whatever sin that they're in. Uh, I, I feel like as, as a, a white Protestant Christian, like um, it's a lot easier to just be like, accept the, the local business owner who just doesn't know Christ, but otherwise is perfect. Right. Um, but guess what? I mean, part of the way to attract people to Christ is to accept people no matter where they come from. That's part of the attraction that you don't see in the world is people being accepting to others, you know, when they're in, um, when, when they're not really fragrant or they're not in a beautiful place that we say, Hey, come on in anyway. That's one of the things I was, ta uh, we were talking with pastor Peter. I, I was talking to pastor Peter the other day is for like the longest time, the only visitors we had to our church were just like friends and family members of people who already went to our church or, or I should say family members of people who already went to our church. And now it's completely normal for people to just walk in off the street and go, there's something different here. I want to see what it is. And that's the difference is that the people that are there that show up are doing the work of Christ. They're, they're being accepting. They're, they're being a light. They're, they're, they're shining. And, and the only other thing that I wanted to bring up for this episode was um, because when I think about the Christians in general, um, I do think a lot about the Pharisees um, that Jesus confronted so many times. And I, I also wanted to bring up, it was in John, <clears throat> that the Pharisees said to him, um, in fact, I think I have it here. Uh, Jesus heard that they had cast him out and, and having found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, and, and, he, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have seen him and he is the one who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I came into this world that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind. Talking about the Pharisees. And it says, some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, 
are we also blind? And Jesus said to them, some of the most powerful words there is in the gospel. Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no guilt. In other words, if you were just a sinner and didn't know you were a sinner, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we can see, your guilt remains. The challenge I would have for people who can hear this episode is that if you are a Christian and you are judging others, you are worse than those people. And by the way, I am, as, as Paul said, I am the worst of the sinners, right? Because I've done all the sins, including judging everybody for everything. <laughs> so, but, but what Jesus is saying is if you believe, if you know me, if you say you know me, and you're still going around condemning the world, your guilt remains. And that's powerful. That's condemning. That's powerful. The Holy Spirit sh- sh- should tell you that they should, he should, it should be condemning you right now and, and getting you to stop this because you can reach people with openness. But if you're just going around condemning people, you are also condemned. And it, we're the ones who should know better. We're the ones who should be teaching people, not condemning people, not judging people. You know, it's, uh, it's an interesting, you know, we're wrapping it up this with this episode here and uh, sin, right? Sin, sin, sin. And, and, and I think a lot of times uh, it's as simple as, as taking it to God in prayer. And, and what brought that up for me was, uh, I, I think it was Sarah that put it on the notes. It wasn't me. But uh, it was talking about many people have left the church because of the members tried to fix them before they could be a part of the church. Right. And. Um, for me. And this is something that that as a, as, as a new pastor, I'm learning is that when people come to me with something, you know, uh, one, one of my first things now is always have 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 you talked to God about it? Right. Have, have you prayed to God about it? And in and, and that prayer is is an interesting word too because i learned a new concept when i went to prayer camp of like when you say hey i'm gonna go pray to god about this i'm gonna go talk to god about it right when you're done with that prayer i should be able to ask you hey what did god say to you what happened right and a lot of times we don't even give god the opportunity to speak to us to move us right it's just like god please help me this and that this is going in your name and pray amen and then you know it's just like we try to play that that card of, of, oh, let me pray now. Let me pray now. And, and real quick, it brought me to uh, to Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus, right? So we're here talking about sin, and I'm here about, oh, I want to define sin. If I find and take it to God, and he gives me that peace that, I'm, that, that, that he's able to only give us through Jesus Christ, it's a lot easier to battle that, that temptation. And, and, and we just really need to start praying a lot more in all our lives and that's a hundred percent me as well uh, i think it's one of the things that that as as christians uh you know we're the hands and feet of jesus christ well if we're the hands and feet of jesus christ it's really build that relationship with him so we can really illuminate that light that he wants us to illuminate Oh, I see. He's dropping illumination in here. And in that, and that, and, and with that, vote for illumination. The link was dropped on the thing. Claire put us in this thing. So just <laughs> go on the thing and click on illumination. And uh, right. if you have several emails, use them all, and then you can do several votes. Oh, I have five emails. How much? How much are you going to pay me for each one? Uh just not sure yet. We'll, we can negotiate off off air. I'm not negotiating after I vote. I, okay. Claire just shared it again. So it's in the this message. is America. Uh, you have to pay me for my vote. <laughs> oh, wait. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'll be praying for uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> Can you guys wrap it up a bit so that's better than well, if you're America, you need to pay to vote or something? 
Yeah, they probably need a better tagline than that. How about when I pray, at least I go before God and I pray and I say, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like Tom and I'm not like Sean. Beautiful. And I'm definitely not like Elijah, who doesn't even show up anymore. Well, listen, listen, just to say something real quick, right? We know that you thank God you're not like me because I'm sure and apparently you like taller people. Ba -ba -ba! But, <laughs> but he would settle if he was shorter because then it would be just the same thing. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wow. You should have presented I, it that way. Lisa yeah. can definitely not listen to this episode because she could solve the problem just by <laughs> cutting me down a couple inches. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, she cut me off at the knees and yeah. I don't have any problem anymore. That would do it. That would do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh hey, uh, hey Sean, can you do me a favor? Yes, sir. <laughs> can you pray That's for us? Yes, yeah, sir. I can We're that. gonna need it. <laughs> <laughs> Father God, we thank you for being able to serve you. Uh it's always a pleasure to do this with these gentlemen that you've put in my life. Um, I just thank you for giving us another opportunity to serve you or the way you ask us to serve. Uh, and Father, this week, I want to pray for Lois as she goes through um, her medical situation. She's going through, Lord, as she battles and fights again. Uh, for all of those that are battling COVID, dealing with it, fighting against it, uh, Lord, we know you'll be in that. We just ask that you would handle that, take that, remove that, and let us you know, help the world move forward. Um, Lord, for uh, Ralph, who's also dealing with health, health issues, Father, be with him. Uh, bring him strength. Bring him a sense of peace. Bring healing. Uh, for Randy, uh, personally, for to give him strength and peace in his life. He's going through it. His dad uh, is doing better, so we have praise, but want to keep praying that you would help continue to make him better as he goes forward. Uh, we pray for Kyle and his neighbor and their family as they deal with the tragedy uh, that they're going through, Father, at this time, for Jonathan Ashley uh, and their family as they also face trials and uh, a very messy situation in their life, Lord. Um, and again, for the situation in our church building, uh, the basement, the project moving forward, uh, that that could be handled the best way possible, Lord, to you know, the most economical and efficient way so we can get that space back open and doing the work for your people. Father, as your people, as the namesake and followers of your son, help us to remove the blinders of deceit that we have placed on ourselves, believing that we are above your will. Take away our disobedient heart against your will and help us to follow Christ more. It's why we're here. It's why we do what we do, because we want to be more like him, less like us. And Father, the world needs more him, because if we are your hands, why aren't they healing? And if we are your feet, why are you not moving in a the world the way it is, your hands and feet should be moving in waves at this point. As Christians, we should be jumping up, screaming out your name, and presenting you to the world. It's not our job to fix people, Father. Help people understand that. It's not our job to fix people. It's our job to love them and so to share our experience so they can see that even a sinner like me can be saved and so can they. I don't fix people. I didn't fix me. Nobody fixed me except for you, Lord. And I can tell, I can tell you from my brothers that this is the case. We don't fix ourselves. The world doesn't fix us. It's when we give up our disobedience it's when we give up our stubborn habits. It's when we stop calling our safe self mistakers and owning and accepting our sin and turning our lives back to you that you can make us whole. You can make us new and you can put us on a path to be a light for others to bring them to you. But we can't do that if we're judging. We can't do that if we're trying to fix because then... And then we're trying to be you. So take that part, Father, from 
all of your people and let us just be the light that you've asked us to be. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I miss Elijah. Yeah. So uh, that's you, Dave. You're the one with the uh, with the experience. The closing. Oh, I'm the, I'm the experienced guy with the singer. yeah yeah with I'm experienced no, with, with the closing. I don't have any experience closing. You know that tagline you have: "If we made you laugh, if we made you think." Oh, please click because that link I was button eating. on the Facebook oh. live stream. All right, I got to do the Mariano Rivera thing. All right, yeah. listen: if we made you laugh, if we made you think, please click that like button on this Facebook live stream. Yes. All right, but if you didn't like anything we had to say then that's a problem with you, but you probably shouldn't share it with anybody. And we love you anyway, even though there's a problem with you because you didn't like what we had to say. Um, (laughs) I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, You can also find us on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get your favorite podcast. I prefer podcast addict, but he does. Also, if you want to go on to our stream here, monco.happeningmag.com and vote for illumination for something, they're going to pay you five bucks. So anyway, awesome. love you. Love you guys. Have a great week. We will see you next week, hopefully with four of us here and well, five of us here, but hopefully with another box filled in here uh, and we'll get Elijah's contract negotiation settled and uh, back and at it. See you. Have a great week. Share this podcast with somebody. We need to catch.